Uh, well, uh, today let's continue with chapter 13 from your social science history. Well, in the previous class, we have discussed about uh, capital towns, temple towns, as well as ports and uh, port cities, such as sea trade, and also we have discussed about sea trade and traders. Today, we will continue with uh, some of the trading towns, such as Hampi, uh, Machli Patnam, and Surat. Well, let's begin with Hampi. You know, Hampi is a world heritage at present. Okay, and Hampi is located uh, somewhere in the Deccan, okay, in in the state of Karnataka. In uh, 1336 AD, uh, the uh, <coughs> city Hampi was founded. All right, and it was also the capital of this Vijayanagar Empire. I think we have already discussed this Vijayanagar Empire in the preceding classes. Okay, so. Uh, mo even today, most of the people visit this place as a historical place, okay? And so, uh, the tourists or the visitors have expressed, okay, it is written that every stone has a story to tell. That means this place is very important, is not it? And uh, Hampi was ruined, okay? So, the ruins shows excellent workmanship. So, when we look at the ruins of this very Hampi, Okay, they had an excellent workmanship. Yeah, this is the picture of uh, very Hampi. All right, you can see the temple. Uh, it is in Karnataka. Okay, see it excellent. It is a magnificent view, so to say. And uh, as far as the buildings, the buildings of the very Hampi is concerned. Uh, they have a beautiful arches, okay, domes, and not only that. They have a pillared uh, hall, so to say. Okay, uh, this pillared hall uh, niches for holding different sculptures. I'm sure you know the meaning of niches. Okay, it's a a space uh, on the wall for placing uh, idols or uh, deities, or uh, even in uh, some of the Hindu houses, you'll be able to see these niches, right? And you will be able to see all charts as well as the gardens around here. In this hampi okay and not only that during 15th and 16th century it was a commercial center if you look at here in this picture okay that was the uh, so to say painting of 15th and 16th century depicted from 15th and 16th century okay many people are engaged in buying and selling so it was a commercial center involving both local as well as foreign merchants from all over the world all right so i'm sure you have understood up to there and uh, this was the temple okay it was known as v virupaksha temple okay virupaksha means shiva okay so uh, cultural activities took place in this very area as well as devadasis who are Devadasis or who were Devadasis? They were temple dancers. They perform, okay, even before the deity of this very temple. Uh, it was ruined, but people still go there uh, to worship this Viru Paksa or uh, Lord Shiva, so to say. Okay, so in 1510 AD, uh, it was repaired by one of the ruler whose name was Krishna Deva Raya. All right. But in 1565, it fell after the defeat of the Sultan, most probably Dekani Sultan. I think I have already mentioned this one when we uh, study the Sultanate of Delhi. Is that not so? All right. Another uh, important uh, seaport uh, in the medieval period was this Masuli Patnam. Uh, Masuli Patnam means first fishing town. Okay. So, it is also known as Masli Patnam, Masli, right? Masli, you know, Masli means fish, okay? So, it is located in the delta. If you look at this very map, uh, you'll be able to see the Krishna River. And in this very delta, this Masli Patnam port is or was located, all right? 
So in the 7th century AD, what happened? Most important cost in Andhra Pradesh, especially in the 7th century AD. Okay, it, is, it was also important port for uh, Satavahanas in the history, okay, ancient history. And also during the medieval period, Kutab Shani, okay, he was the ruler of this Golconda, you know. So he made this port as a very important port uh, for uh, trade and uh, even for commercial activity, so to say. Okay, even English, the English, the Dutch, the French tried to control this very port when they came to India. All right, in the early, uh, so to say, modern or in the late medieval period. The earliest non-British settlement was this Masuli Patnam. They first, when they came to India, they first settled in this very port, that is Masuli Patnam. All right, so uh, this was the picture uh, during the late uh, 17th century. Okay, it was just look like this. This was a uh, painting that was made uh, during their time. And today, you'll be able to see Machli Patnam Port, which is in Andhra Pradesh. It has improved. It is magnificent. It's very beautiful. Zunot. Okay, another important point is that uh, uh, there were struggling among uh, Golconda rulers, Persians, as well as Europeans to control in the late uh, 17th century AD. Okay, most of the time, Golconda rulers. You might have heard uh, this uh, Dekani, you know, Sultan of this Dekani, Sultan Dekani, so to say. Okay, even the Persians, they were there at the time for business purposes, even the Europeans, they always struggle among themselves to control it. And in around 1686-87, this Mughal, the Mughal annexed this Golconda. They have defeated the king of this Golconda and it became a part of this Mughal Empire. Okay, most probably during the time of Aurangzeb. So, uh, after this Mughal, European traders, they moved to Kolkata, Madras, Bombay. All right. So, this Masuli Patnam, yeah, I mean, uh, this Masuli Patnam was a very popular trade center but when the european moved to other places places like kolkata madras madras means chennai all right even bombay means mumbai so what happened to this place lost its trading facilities and also its prosperity so at last this masuli patnam it declined in 18th century all right Okay, we'll see the last one, that is Surat. Surat was uh, a port or is a port in the western part of the uh, west coast of Gujarat. Okay, during the time of Mughal, it was a port city. All right, and in 1613, British, they established a factory. And not only the British, others like the Dutch, the French, and the, even the Portuguese, they established factory in this surat okay you can see from the map right here no no uh one of the guy or uh, one of the writer whose name was overington let us repeat again overington he mentioned in his books that hundreds of ships from from different countries was found in this very surat all right oh so textiles it was very famous for its cloth border. You know what's the meaning of cloth borders? Uh, in the cloth, there are some borders. You know? So it was very famous. Okay. And this area, especially Surat and uh, adjoining areas, they produce a lot of cottons. All right. So it was transported or it was exported through, this, through the port of this Surat. So they export all this textile products to west asia okay west asia you know, you know iran iraq persia you know mesopotamia west asia and even to europe 
you know, like Rome, Roman Empire, even to Italy, uh, even to uh, England and all. They export to all these places in, in, the, in the past. So, this was one of the saints. Okay, the port of Surat was uh, uh, looked like this. Okay, and the British, this was the first British factory in the port of Surat. Okay, so Surat, it declined by the end of 17th century. Yeah, declines of Mughals. <clears throat> Even the Mughals also, they declined it. As soon as the Mughals declined, this Surat was controlled by the Mughals. <clears throat> but because of the declines of this Mughal, the very port also, it was under the control of other uh, a party, so to say. And one of the another reason is there were competition from Mumbai or Bombay, where English East India Company shifted its headquarters in 1668. Surat was supposed to be the major port, but after some time, okay, the place where the British they had their factory and all, which I have shown you right here. But after some time, after this, by the end of 17th century. Uh, they moved to other places. So, what happened was that uh, <coughs> it declined. Okay, it discontinued to be a trade center. But today at present, it continued to be a bustling town even today. So, if you look at this very picture, uh, it is magnificent. Uh, there are so many uh, business persons and businessmen are settled in this area and trade to other countries, even to Southeast Asian countries, uh, to West Asia are still taking place from this Surat port city. I'm sure you have learned something about uh, traders, right? And port cities of India in the past, especially during the time of medieval period. No, no. So, uh, please learn all the notes from the study materials. Okay, which I have sent you in your WhatsApp group. Read your textbooks. All right. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. May God bless you. All right. And thank you so much for participating in this learning.